I'm Cheryl Baker and welcome to TV Cruise Channel's Guide to Family Cruising. In this programme we aim to show you how taking the whole family on a cruise could be the best holiday you've ever had. But with so many cruise lines and ships out there, which is the right one for you and your family? Well, Adam Coulter, editor of Cruise Critic, joins me now to talk about the many options available. Welcome, Adam. Thank you very much, Cheryl. So, is it really a good option to take the family on a cruise? Uh, I, it's the best option, certainly, that I've found. I've got two boys, nine and five, and um, they I can't get them out of the kids' club, for one. Um, the, some of the, the quality of entertainment on board is incredible for the kids, in fact, for all ages. Um, and uh, I mean, we can, we can talk about it in more detail, but in terms of like the level of care, the, the programs that they have for the kids, the babysitting services, the, the ability to spend a bit of time with your other half while mm -hmm. your kids are being entertained, all of this is, uh, for me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose another option. So what activities are there to do for the kids? Well, on the bigger lines, they divide them into age groups. So on most lines you can bring from babies from six months and above. Uh, well, and they look after them? They will. They on, on Royal Caribbean, for example, they have this thing called Royal Tots uh, Nursery. So, um, and they don't need to be obviously potty trained, obviously not at that, at that age, but they have specially trained staff to look after the really little ones. Some you have to stay and play. You can't leave them all day or anything like that, but it, you can go on board from babies from six months, but the real program, programming comes in from three years and above. So they divide them into three to five, usually six to nine and then nine to 12 and then teens. So they keep these three groups separate um, and well, occasionally they'll mix them up if they're doing big games all together, but they'll have, they'll have age specific activities for all these, for the kids. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not just sort of Wii's and Xboxes. They're gonna be, they get them uh, drawing, painting, coloring, building, uh, dressing up. That You'll see them doing scavenger hunts dressed up as pirates around the ship, which is really lovely mm -hmm. to watch. So they keep them really well entertained all day. And and then often at the end of these cruises, they'll do, they'll sometimes do a performance for the, for the parents. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll be in a little play or something, which is just absolutely heartwarming to watch. So. What about the difficult age, you know, the, the yeah. teens and tweens, you Yes. Well, there's much more light touch programming for them. So they'll often have a room, sort of a cool hangout room, um, and they'll have maybe one person from the kids club there. But they, they're not they're not organized to do anything. They can just hang out and, you know, be mm. cool and moody. Or <laughs> Or they can, um, or they can do. Is they can, they'll have teen disco, for example. It's usually on a bit early. No alcohol, obviously. Um, sometimes on the bigger lines, if there's a lot of teens on board, again they'll split them into the younger teens, mm. which so it sort of starts at 12 actually, and maybe goes up to about sort of 15, 16, and then you'll have the older teens. And it usually only goes up to 17 because by 18 years old, on most ships you can drink and you can hang out with the adults yeah. so so that and then there's some ships even programmed for the 18 to 21s because some american ships don't allow you to certainly when they're cruising oh, in yeah, yeah. u.s waters mm. so you have that sort of slightly also slightly or tricky age about what do the what do they do they don't really want to hang out with their parents mm. they want to hang out with themselves so so as i say the bigger ships they have more programming for all the different age groups and how about dining i mean do you yes. do the children always have to dine with you or do they do they offer that facility Again, you can you can play it, you can play it however you want to. So often you you'll have on many ships you'll have a family time dining, which will often be earlier. It'll be in a little part of one of the main dining restaurants. Um, you can either go with your kids or you can leave them with the camp, the counsellors. You know the, the 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 people that are looking after them, and they'll take them there and they'll have a a fun you know kid centric meal for for an hour or so mm -hmm. early evening. Or you know you can dress them up if you want to, and they can come out with you to the to the main dining and often main dining starts at 6.30 anyway so even if you've got quite young kids it's not like you'll be keeping them out very yeah, late. Yeah. So. You mentioned earlier babysitting, do they actually offer babysitters they, who come to your cabin or how do they do They do it? but fewer and fewer lines are offering this because it's quite tricky usually they have to you actually have to book two babysitters because you have to have one sort of keeping an eye on the other and then they keep an eye on the child so then it gets quite complicated okay, okay. but you can have it um, but it obviously they charge for that. What I should mention is all that kids programming is completely free, which is another huge boon for parents. So it once is. you're on board, you don't even have to worry about the cost, except for the babies. Usually there's a charge for them and for the babysitting. And if you're doing after hours stuff, if you're leaving in them, them in there, say, you know, seven, eight, nine o'clock while you have dinner, there's usually a nominal fee that mm. you have to pay. And did the, because most cabins are for two people. Yes. Do they have family rooms or do the children have to have a separate cabin? 
of stateroom, whatever they call it. Yeah, the, the cruise ships call them staterooms, but they, you know, it's probably easier to call them cabins. But um, no, they, they, a lot of the bigger lines now, they have cabins, all different shapes and sizes. So they have family suites, you know, with adjoining rooms. I mean, I was on one um, with my family, uh, Allure of the Seas, and they have this lovely little alcove bit, which is like a giant cupboard, really. But they put a bunk bed in there and the boys loved it. So you yeah. just pulled a curtain across <laughs> and they had their own bunk bed. So it was separate from the, from the you know, for the adults. So we could, you know, could watch TV on low while they were asleep. So that, that was a nice touch rather than all just being in sort of one big room. Yes. And then, you know, they have some amazing family suites with whole separate rooms mm. and, uh, you know, whole separate bathroom facilities. So. The, the old stigma that you had to be rich, famous or old to go on ships, it doesn't apply anymore, does it? It doesn't, it really doesn't. It's it's, it's very old fashioned view of things. Obviously there are some ships that will cater for certain demographics, you yeah. know, so people, more elderly people, and, and, and so there should be. Whereas, you know, other, other ships, as I said, the ones I was mentioning before, they're very much catering for all these new demographics. So families, um, young couples, uh, multi-generational groups, you know, so grandparents, parents, kids. Um, so really, you know, there, there's, there's ships to cater for every type of person. And again, some people think that, uh, as they've said to me, mm. oh, I wouldn't like to go on a cruise ship, you know, uh, it's too claustrophobic, it's too regimented. It, it isn't, is it? No, again, these are all myths and, and they need to be debunked, I think. I mean, the, the easiest way to do that is get on, get on a ship and, and, and see what it's like. But no, in terms of the claustrophobia thing, um, no, you, you, you know, you, you're in a cabin, but obviously you can get out of your cabin. You can go wandering around on the decks. Some of these ships have got 18 decks, you know, and some of the newer ships, um, they've got all this outdoor, these promenade type decks. So you always can be out there. You can smell the ocean, um, feel that you're out on, on the open seas, which is lovely. Um, and in terms of regimentation, well, I mean, a lot of lines still do have the set dining thing, which you can opt for, but a lot of them don't bother with that anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can literally, you can turn up to the dining room, whenever you want. And I say the dining room, some ships, like for example, the Norwegian ships, um, they have more than 20 dining options now. Mm. So you can just choose when and where you want to eat and what type of food you like as well. Yeah, it's, it, the options are so vast oh, it's now. My, it's incredible, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. so many cruise lines. Do they, uh, going back to mm. dining on your own or whatever, or yes. going to a show in the evening, Yes. does the babysitting service cover that until sort of like two in the morning or something, if you want to go to the disco or? It does, but the thing, the probably the more common option really is to leave your kids in the kids club. Now, if they're really young, they have little cots at the back, so mm. they'll put the baby to sleep or the, or the youngster, the toddler to sleep and you can pick them up. Other ones, you'll, they'll sort of keep the kids occupied or they'll watch a movie or something and wind them down a mm. bit. And so they'll be with their friends. And that's, that's also a very common option, mm. you know, a popular one to do. So if they're dining with you, yes. say at the 6.30 dining, do mm. they have children's menus? Uh, yes, they will cater for kids. Yes, oh, yes. Okay. you can okay. you can always you can pretty well order whatever you want, you know, with, within reason. And especially for the kids, they'll do either smaller portions or they'll do, you know, hot dogs, pizzas, chicken mm. or, or whatever it is. Mm. But but for example, um, again, on Allure of the Seas, I took my kid to this wonderful uh, hibachi uh, sort of Asian themed restaurant. I don't know if you've ever been to this. They're big in New York where you have it. It's sort of like an entertainment thing. You have this this chef with a kind of a hat a Japanese chef and he's there and he's chopping up onions oh, and seen have you seen yeah, that brilliant. and they did them on the Norwegian ships as well and he was complete you know he's my kid was there he's completely entranced by this she <laughs> was throwing eggs at him and you know and uh, and, and they're chopping this stuff up and, and it was a real show it was real entertainment so you know so I, I, I there are kids menus but I sometimes quite I like my child to try you know, my kids to try other stuff, yeah. you know, and that's one example where it's really fun and interactive. Uh, some people would say that on a ship yes. it's too confined for children because they might be very energetic, they might want to do athletics. Are there any opportunities like that on, on board ships? There are, there are endless ones. I mean, what they do often with the kids programming is that they'll have a session where they'll take them to the sports club. It'll be booked out by the kids club and they can have you know, basketball, football, so five aside stuff they can do uh there's table tennis um enclosed obviously otherwise the ball would fly <laughs> off mini golf there's all sorts of things they can do when they get a bit bigger they can do um this there's uh similar there's um 
skydiving, simulated skydiving on some big, some of the bigger ships, and also there's uh, surfing at the back of the bigger Royal Caribbean ships called the Flow Rider. I've seen that. Yeah, I think you have I've to be over that. a certain height and age, but um, I'm sure teens can do it. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, but so there's there's tons of stuff for kids to do, and on some of the P and O ships, which is very nice, they have an enclosed Aventura. They have an enclosed outdoor area with a kids swimming pool to, directly connected to the kids club mm. and all the ships will have a uh, family pool and often like a family hot tub and a, a family lazy river thing and, mm. and the ship I've just come off Ovation of the Seas they've got these um, lovely water slides for kids as well it's called a splash away bay and you have the little kids running around and is that children only yeah well yeah families yeah it's children only you wouldn't want adult adults wouldn't want yeah. to be there anyway but that's you know, lovely because the, the kids, noise because it stuff. makes them feel like it's their special area absolutely yeah, yeah. and it's, it's it's really nicely catered for actually so how about I don't suppose you know any child wants to go on as if they're going back to school but there are some <laughs> children who like to read and learn things yeah. are there things offered for them in that oh, yeah respect? there's educational stuff Nor Norwegian Cruise Line for example has, has partnered with um, a company in the UK and the name escapes me but they they do much more educational based stuff so they can do you know as I say they do learning stuff that they they'll learn about the port of call they're at so they'll learn mm. the history but they'll make it fun so if they're going to the Caribbean it's all pirates you know yeah. and if they're going somewhere around the Mediterranean it's all sort of you know bringing the Greeks or the Romans to life or mm. the Spanish or whatever it might be so they, they mix it up with games, you know, energetic stuff, but also, you know, there's, there is an educational piece mm. to it as well. And ports of call, are yes. there shore excursions that are aimed at families and children? This, this is a really good question because a lot of the lines, they do now have a symbol indicating if it's a family friendly one, because mm. You have to be, it's one of the things you have to be careful about, especially if sort of you're in the, in the Mediterranean in August, it's hot yeah. and crowded. Yeah. yeah. And if you're tramping over some ancient monument with a three-year-old, it's not fun. So it's really good to speak to the shore excursion desk and mm. say to them, is this family friendly? Mm. Will my kid enjoy this? Mm. Um, so it's de de there are some, but it's definitely worth doing your research to make sure it's the right one. Lots of water sports offered, presumably. On board, yes. Tons of stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, thank you very much. We're going to talk some more in just a moment after this short break. See you in a while. And welcome back to TV Cruise Channel's Guide to Family Cruising. Adam Coulter, editor of Cruise Critic, is still with me. And Adam, we were talking about themed cruises, That's which is, right. which you know, every child's dream. dream. Yeah, well, the ones recently are really exciting. My boys are pestering me to get on board the Star Wars themed cruises. Mm -hmm. And Disney, as you know, has bought the Star Wars franchise. And, yes. and a couple of their ships, which are sailing out of the UK, actually, this summer, they've got... Um, full-size Millennium Falcon on board and occasionally you'll see the characters dressed up you know Luke Skywalker with Darth Vader wandering about oh. um, you can have a you know there'll be a Star Wars day lightsaber battles and all that so so that's one example um, Royal Caribbean has a link up with DreamWorks so you have all the characters from there come to life Kung Fu Panda mm. How to Train Your Dragon and you go down to to what's called the Royal Promenade on the bigger ships and they will have you know an actual they'll have the characters walking along in a great big procession oh, fantastic. and everybody will be watching and taking pictures. You do character meet and greets, so they'll come to the kids club, you know, dressed up, Kung Fu Panda or whatever, shake hands and, and, and the same on p and they've got a link up with um, the Mr. Men, so you have uh, Mr. Bump and Little mm. Miss Sunshine, I think it is, and, and again, they get to meet the kids and stuff. So so there's kind of these different themes for the kids, Brilliant. you know, what there's a great so idea. much to, ent yeah, to entertain. How about Every Little Girl's Dream, uh, Frozen? Oh yes, 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 thank you for mentioning that. Disney have got are uh, heading up to the Baltic and they've got um, two, I think it's two, might be four, frozen themed cruises where you go to the land of where Princess Elsa was from and again, all dressed up, you mm. can, the characters are on board. So, Brilliant. I mean, Disney is one of those ships, one of those lines that they just really, because they've obviously the whole part of the bigger Disney franchise, they absolutely immerse mm. themselves in it. Mm. So, you know, you'll see Mickey on board, you'll see Pluto, you'll see all the different characters from Disney. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, those ships. Mm. I would imagine when you go into port, yeah. The kids don't want to get off because there's so much going on. What do you do on port days? Well, it, ver it varies by ship and some and varies by line, I should say. So, for example, I know that Royal Caribbean, um, they allow you to leave your kids in the kids club. They'll be very well looked after and you get to have some quality time with your other half. You can go on to a port. You can do a bit of shopping, maybe have a coffee, go and have some lunch undisturbed. Um, come back on and pick up your kids. And You mentioned this, didn't you? And yes. you said you felt guilty. Well... <laughs> 
<laughs> I did momentarily, and then I realised. <laughs> I think the thing was, is when I went to the club uh, the, on the first day, and I was like, oh my goodness, we've left them in there too long, and I literally had to drag them out, kicking and screaming. I realised, actually, you know, it's great to spend a lot of time with your kids, but at the end of the day, once they reach a certain age, they really love to be with, with their friends, you know, yeah. the little friends that they've made throughout the cruise. And they still say, are we going to see those people? And I have to explain, well, probably not. We didn't really keep in touch, but they make such close friends at that mm. age. And so, no, I did. I, you do feel momentarily guilty, but then you quickly get over it. <laughs> <laughs> and actually on board, are there areas mm. where you can go where the kids can't go? Yeah, there are more and more ships, actually, even the, the family friendly ones, they all have these kind of... Um, serenity areas or tranquil areas or retreats and they've all they've all got these places where you sometimes you, you don't need to book or anything other ones you have to book and you can just go there mm. no kids allowed very quiet adults only you'll have your own kind of you know hot tubs or um, different areas where you can just relax uh, and and that's that's actually really nice as well mm. to be able to get away from the kids for a bit um, and then you'll have, you know, by contrast, you have the family pools, but then you'll also have the adults only swimming pools. Mm. So it's not completely segregated like that. Most of the other areas you, you completely mix, mm. but it's quite nice to have separate areas yes. if you want to get away from it for a bit. Do you, if you're leaving your child, mm. especially a young child, do you have to tell them where you're going or do you have one of those bleeper things in case they need to get in touch with you? It's a really good question. And, and for a lot of parents who's, who are doing it for the first time, um, they need the reassurance that their kids are going to be fine. Yeah. And I've seen parents that, who are doing it for the first time. And, you know, it's like when you first drop your kid off at nursery. So if mm. they're very young, you can get a bleeper. You can ask for a bleeper. And if there are any problems, you'll be bleeped or you can call them straight away. All the kids are issued with a wristband as soon as they get on board with a cabin number. And all of them have to be registered. You have to sign them in and out. So there's a contact number. They'll always be able to get hold of you at any time, basically. Mm. Mm. Um, so it, 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 honestly, it's very... It's very well done on these ships. Mm. They've got it down to a fine art and the kids are always completely safe because they're well, always being monitored. And it's not like they can get lost. No, you can't get lost on no. a ship. <laughs> not really. You might um, want them to once in a while, but no, you can't, you, can't, they don't, you can't get lost. Are there activities that you can do as a family? There are. There's some really fun stuff that they do, usually sort of at the end of the programming day, you know, so five-ish or so, they'll have... Um, family disco, you know, which is always a bit embarrassing, watching the dads dance and all the rest of it. But <laughs> you can have that, which is a lot of fun. Obviously, the family time eating as well. And then one of the loveliest things that I know Royal Caribbean does, but I'm sure other lines do as well, is that they'll have this show at the end, um, which the kids have participated in. They put it on for the families in a little sort of kid sized theatre and you can sit there and watch them. And that's absolutely lovely to watch. So they do. There are a lot of sort of things that that are done for the family. Hmm. But again, it's optional. You yes. don't have to. And you can do your own thing with your kids. Obviously, you don't have to put them in the kids mm. club. It's up to you. Are there cruise lines that you think excel uh, at family holidays or, and, and with the catering and with the entertainment yes. activities? There are. And I, and, and I will single them out because they are exceptional. And I think Ro Royal Caribbean is absolutely outstanding with its kids facilities. Mm. Amazing. Norwegian Cruise Line is also exceptional. And also the P&O Cruises family friendly ships are really, really good as well. Mm. So those three, I think, are outstanding. But you'll find on, 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 all, on almost all lines that do cater for families, they've all got excellent programming on board. It's just that those ones, because they've got the biggest ships, mm. they have the biggest facilities, and they're just they're so much fun for the kids. Mm. Yeah. Um, I've been on board ships yes. when it's been the school holidays and yes. the ship has been packed <laughs> with kids. And then I've been on ships when it's been in the middle of term yeah. and it's practically entirely yeah. adult, adult only. Adult only yes. So do they still, do the, the clubs and everything still run throughout the year? Well, they will do for the non-school age kids, you know, but I oh, think the course, school age yeah. kids, they're just, they, they should be in school really, except for half terms, obviously, to find the kids on board. But I love seeing kids on board because I think it adds that really fun sort mm. of element to it. They're always having so much fun. Mm. But um, yeah, it, some, some lines, you know, you're not going to get that many on board, but you, you just, you can pick and choose. You can see which ones cater, mm. you know, that they build themselves as family friendly. Mm. So. How about necessities, especially say if you mm. have a baby and you need nappies mm. and things, can you can you get all that on board? You can do, yes. That's another excellent question because I think that's new, you know, kids, uh, parents with, with fairly young kids, that is something to, to be concerned about. So obviously they've got to wear swimming nappies when they go to the splash pools and things like mm. that. And then the regular nappies and uh, formula as well. Uh, and any other sort of stuff that you need for the kids, you, you can find this, the shops on board. You don't have to bring it all with you? You can bring it with you if you've got specialist stuff that you, that you like to use particularly, or, you know, one of the best things, if, if, you've, 
If you've booked direct, speak to the cruise line and ask them what they offer. Or if you've done it through a travel agent, ask them to make sure what you can get. But by and large, these big ships will have everything you mm. need. Mm. So. so are there any particular itineraries that are suited to families? Well, I always think that if you have never cruised before, a good place to start is the Mediterranean. Because mm. oftentimes, you'll have been to a lot of those places already, you mm. know, Spain, um, Italy, France. So you probably know that area quite well already. And it's very port intensive. And what I mean by that is that you see a port every day. Yes. So it's places that, you know, Barcelona, Marseille, Monaco, uh, Rome, Naples, Parma. And often these places you would have taken a trip to, you know, many years ago or, or just recently. And you'll know it well, which is also very nice because it means you can go to the places that you like to go mm. when you're in that place. But it's great for the kids as well, because a lot of these ones, port, the port is in the city. So Barcelona is only a, cab, a short cab ride away. Some are a bit further, like the port for Rome is, is a good 40 minutes away. But others like Naples, you literally, your ship docks at the bottom of Naples. Mm. You, you literally get off, you're in Naples, which is amazing. Mm. Um, and so those are really good because it means you just get off the ship with your kids, you're straight in the town itself. You know, no long bus rides or taxi rides or anything. Do the, uh, do the kids clubs tell, mm. tell the kids about the ports of call that they're coming into next? They will do, yes, yes. Kind of prime them yeah, yeah. to get their, get their juices flowing. Yeah, they know? do. We went, we went on we went, uh, a lovely uh, cruise. Maybe you've been on it, uh, a Caribbean one, on, on, um, on P&O Cruises Ventura. Mm. And uh, so every, you know, we went to all these places where, where Pirates of the Caribbean was actually filmed, mm -hmm. you know, which I, which I think was off St. Lucia, actually. And there's a, there was some ship that they had there that they used. So before each of these ports of call, you would have, they, they'd have this briefing for, well, briefing, that's completely the wrong word. They, they, <laughs> that's, they, too that's too adult. That's <laughs> they, they, they talk to the kids about what went on there and then make it contemporary by saying, oh, and has any, have any of you seen Pirates of the Caribbean? Well, this is where it was filmed. And the Caribbean, so, if, if, so going back to about like maybe doing your first cruise in the Med, I would say if you're feeling a bit more adventurous, do your second one in the Caribbean. Mm. Okay, it's a long way to get to, but th those are the most beautiful islands. And I tell you what, waking up in the morning, and looking at Dominica, Grenada, yeah. Barbados coming, as you're getting closer, is, mm. uh, it's the most ex amazing feeling. And the kid, you just sit on the balcony, if you're lucky, lucky enough to have a balcony cabin, and you watch the island coming closer. And again, with those, you're parked virtually in the, the tiny little town. So it's such a beautiful way to mm. see it, you know, by ship. Adam, we have to wrap it there, but do you know what I love? I love the fact that you sound like you really love your job. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you do. You love cruising. Hopefully That's you can feel that enthusiasm. Well, thanks to you and your company, and, uh, and I'll see you again very soon here on TV Cruise Channel. Mm -hmm.